Hello everyone and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ and we're going to be talking a little bit about something a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about and that's going to be storage. Specifically we're going to be diving a little bit more into finding out about SSDs and what's going to be the right SSDs to look at depending a little bit on the usage, a little bit on the performance, a little bit on the features and functionality as far as if you're going to be building a system what's going to be maybe the right SSD or some of the points to consider for that SSD in your build. So we're going to go ahead and explain a little bit about the different various form factors, the different levels of performance, and also how they ultimately affect you when you go about building your system. And we're going to be giving you some insights into how this all ties together to be able to hopefully improve the experience you're going to be having when it comes to interfacing your storage with your build. So let's talk a little bit more about SSDs and how they affect you. So when it comes to SSDs and storage in general, there's actually a lot of different terms that are out there right now. Everything from AHCI to SATA, to MVME, to PCI Express, to M.2. So there can be a lot of confusion when it comes to understanding what might be the right choice as far as putting into your build and how it's going to affect your build and what are going to be the overall considerations you're going to make when it comes to these relative storage devices. Um, so first and foremost, if we kind of go about the different crop of drives that the, or solutions that we have available to you, because not everything looks like a traditional drive, um, you can see right here that we've actually got four different storage solutions. And you're going to have first and foremost the traditional 2.5 inch SATA based SSD. Uh, now this is very much uh, kind of the most common type of solution that's currently available in the marketplace and it offers performance markers in terms of sequential performance up to about 600 megabytes theoretically. In the real world tops off about 550 megabytes. Now over the last about year and a half uh, we've seen a lot more popularity in smaller form factor storage solutions, specifically in the M.2. So with M.2, uh, this was predominantly a form factor that was designed for uh, small form factor uh, notebook solutions or ultrabooks, but has now found its way into the desktop motherboard arena, whether you're talking about ATX, micro ATX, or mini ATX solutions. Now, this is where the storage aspect gets a little bit more complicated, as M.2 can offer uh, traditional SATA-based connectivity, uh, but it can also offer a higher form of connectivity that is referred to as PCI Express. Now for you guys that know about motherboards, you're all uh, probably very familiar with the wide range of PCIe slots that you have on a motherboard that you would use for graphics cards. Uh, all those utilize PCI Express. So this is a much faster interconnect in terms of the bandwidth that it supplies. And those M.2 based SSDs can potentially leverage it. But the connector that you're going to see on the M.2 drive is essentially the same. So this is where things get a little bit complicated and you want to make sure to check the specifications for the drive that you're looking at. Now if you get a native PCI Express based M.2 drive, you can offer significantly faster speeds, easily twice that to three to four times the performance of what would be offered with a traditional 2.5 inch SATA AHCI based SSD. So we have another crop of SSDs on the, uh, the market that have now come out and that's specifically going to be drives like what we have here with Intel 750 series. Now these are absolute game changers in terms of the features and functionality, the performance and really the overall specifications that they offer as they're not only utilizing that PCI Express that we talked about earlier, but they're also introducing the MVME protocol. Now without getting overtly complicated, when you take a look at different storage solutions, you have an interconnect that is essentially used to be able to communicate from the actual device to the motherboard. And what we have with previous generations is we have an AHCI protocol, which has been around for about 10 plus years. And it is predominantly first and foremost designed for mechanical based solutions, and it's been transitioned into flash based solutions. Of course, with flash-based solutions, they offer much better performance and a whole slew of other advancements. So the MVME protocol was specifically designed for them. And that's what you have now within this generation. Now, right now, predominantly pretty much all the native PCIe and MVME-based solutions are going to be PCI Express-based and either an add-in card solution like this or potentially in an M.2-based uh, SSD. But Intel has also released a 750 series drive, which will be utilizing a specialized connector that you'll find uh, featured on ASUS motherboards uh, with a special HyperKit module that allow you to leverage the same type of performance that you would have traditionally from uh, a standard add-in card. So that overall gives you a little bit of perspective in terms of the current range of devices that you have available to you. But what we want to talk about more now is depending on the usage that you're going to be utilizing uh, for these SSDs is which one might make more sense depending on your build and your usage model. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So first and foremost, one of the key things that a lot of people care about when you go about building a system is going to be the post and the boot time. So the post is the power on self-test. It's pretty much your system powering on initializing all the devices. 
Now with pretty much all generation SSDs, when it comes to your post time, all of them are gonna offer extremely fast post times because all the current generation chipset motherboards all offer very fast optimization to be able to acknowledge all the devices as they're connected. But like in a lot of cases, uh, your post time can really vary depending on a wide number of factors, whether it's the amount of memory that you have installed, the number of graphics cards installed, the number of storage devices connected to it, even the number of peripherals that are connected to corresponding I.O. ports on your motherboard. Um, that being said, if we take a look between a M.2 base SSD, a traditional SATA HCI base SSD, uh, a, a PCI Express uh, SSD, whether it's going to be NVMe or HCI, all are going to offer very comparable speeds. Um, if we talked about, you know, which one's going to be faster than the other, um, we would probably say as of right now, you would probably give the edge maybe to the um, PCI Express uh, HCI based SSDs uh, or adding card based SSDs as those are kind of right now purposely optimized within the Intel chipset architecture. So that's going to give you a little bit slight edge, but we're talking literally just a couple of seconds. Now beyond that, of course, a lot of us care about performance. So let's talk a little bit more about how these different SSDs when we talk about performance are going to be impacting the overall experience. So in regards to the performance, any SSD is pretty much going to offer you significantly improved performance in an order of what's called magnitudes. It's going to be quite a bit faster. You're talking about factors of two, three, four, five, up to 10 times faster than what you're going to have with a traditional mechanical based hard drives. So when it comes to overall just the snappiness, the general responsiveness, how quick you're going to install applications, uninstall them, load patches, load up your games, uh, browse the internet, all those things are going to be dramatically improved with any type of SSD. Now as you get into more complex workloads and as you get into using your system more dynamically or more specifically for specialized applications, larger file sizes, bigger maps and games, of course the better performing architecture that's in the SSD is going to give you correspondingly improved performance. But it will become uh, a, a, a smaller interval of improvement that you're going to have. As let's say an example, let's say an entry level SSD that we may purchase um, will let it, let's say allow us to go from a mechanical hard drive uh, load time in a game of let's say a minute and a half uh, to when an SSD, it may drop down to something about let's say 20 seconds. And then going to a, even a higher performing SSD with let's say a more advanced controller uh, is going to maybe get us maybe two or three seconds, maybe five seconds on the onset of, of, of it being the absolute best SSD you can get. So you can see definitely the margin of improvement is quite a bit more granular. But it really comes down to the usage model. Content creators out there, professional users that have much more demanding uh, workloads may benefit from going to multiple drives in a RAID array or may benefit from going to higher performing solutions like you have with PCI Express, which offers much, much higher bandwidth. Now to quickly kind of recap again on this performance side, remember we talked about initially SATA based SSDs being limited to a throughput of about 500, 550 megabytes. Now even if you RAID those drives on a modern generational motherboard, you can't exceed about 1500 megabytes in terms of the performance. While we can easily exceed that um, in some M.2 based SSDs if the motherboard supports the corresponding speed for that M.2 drive, whether it's a by 2 or by 4 interconnect, which would uh, let you know essentially how much bandwidth is offered to that connection. And of course for adding cards like what we would have with the 750 series that plug directly into the PCI Express slot, they can offer easily in speeds of you know, 1.5, 2, 2.5, even in excess of 3 gigabytes uh, sequential performance in terms of read and write performance. So definitely when we talk about if you want the absolute highest level of performance, it's going to traditionally be offered right now in PCI Express adding cards, followed up by M.2 based uh, SSDs, and then lastly SATA based SSDs would offer the lowest level of overall total performance. Uh, but the one that bucks the trend would be solutions like Intel's M.2 uh, interfaced uh, 2.5 inch SSD which connects into an M.2 slot via an adapter which will offer you the same speeds as what you would have with a traditional add-in card. So lastly, let's take a little bit something else into consideration which is going to be capacity as well as price and how that associates into all this. So lastly, we want to talk a bit about um, kind of price and capacity as that's definitely a large influence. Traditionally, when we take a look at the most uh, robust option set in terms of the different SSDs at the most varied price points and the most aggressive price points you're going to have available to you, the traditional 2.5 inch SATA SSD by far is going to be the cheapest solution with the most variation in terms of the number of controllers that are available to you. Controllers dictate the performance of the SSD. Uh, and also have the widest variation in terms of capacity. Right now, predominantly, you're looking at capacities that start off at about 120 gigabytes and then go all the way to about one terabyte is what we traditionally see in the consumer space. And in terms of the pricing, pricing has become very competitive in terms of price per dollar 
uh, per gigabyte that you're going to have in an SSD, which where if you look at, uh, let's say, a 240 gigabyte SSD, it's easily below a dollar a gigabyte. Now, as you go into higher performing solutions, uh, whether they're going to be M.2 based SSDs or definitely as you look at a uh, highest performing solutions in PCI Express adding cards, whether we're talking about solutions like the Intel 750 series or other uh, PCI Express based SSDs that are on the market, you're going to generally be talking about a factor of sometimes 1.5 to 2.5 maybe even three times the cost. So you definitely have to evaluate the perspective of whether or not that improved level of performance that that SSD is going to be offering to you is going to be worth the investment that you're going to bring into. So wrapping things up, we've given you a lot of different information. We've given you a little bit of the technical aspects as far as the different types of SSDs that are out there on the marketplace, a little bit about how they have varying levels of performance, also the different types of considerations you might have in terms of how they interface onto a motherboard. But there's a whole lot more that actually goes into making your decision-making process. Process. But to try to give you guys a little bit of a kind of concise reference point, if first and foremost all you care about is how quickly your system can post and how quickly it can boot up into your operating system, uh, any traditional SATA based SSD right now on the market is going to provide you a great experience. If you invest a little bit more into some of the higher uh, positioned offerings that they have out there in the marketplace, you're going to get a little bit better performance, but all the way around. Entry solutions to top end solutions are going to provide a very fast post and boot time. Now, when it comes to performance, there's going to be quite a bit bigger difference when it comes to the overall experience that you might have between, let's say, a SATA based SSD uh, and then a uh, PCI Express based SSD. And then on top of that, of course, the difference between AHCI and NVMe based SSDs. Now, when it comes to the overall performance that most of you guys are probably going to be looking for, once again, the traditional SATA based SSD on the market is going to offer a great experience. And that's going to be across all types of usage model, whether you're talking about web browsing, general applications loading, of course, uh, boot time for those applications, as well as overall copy performance and a wide range of other aspects that your storage uh, interface influences on how you go about using your system. Now, if you're absolutely looking for the best experience possible, you absolutely want the fastest level of performance possible. That's going to be beyond what a traditional SATA based SSD is going to offer you, and you're going to want to move into a PCI Express based SSD, whether that's an M.2 based SSD or PCI Express add-in card based SSD, those are going to offer you the absolute fastest levels of performance that are currently available in the marketplace. And if you're looking for the absolute best of the best, it's pretty much going to be an MVME based PCI Express based SSD. Now lastly, in terms of users that are looking for the absolute best when it comes to capacity, um, I'm going to probably favor the traditional based SSD as well. And that's just because in terms of the overall performance to the price ratio, or if you're targeting fast high density storage based solutions, your best option is going to once again be the traditional SATA based SSD. So overall, hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into what is going to be the right SSD as you go about building your system. And as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, feel free to go ahead and drop them here on the channel. We'll do our best to go ahead and get back to you when you can. As well as you can also make sure to hit us up at our PCDI website. It's pcdiy.asus.com for more information there on this and a whole lot more. So as always, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.